Hello, this is Joe McGee. Welcome to our podcast. Make sure that you subscribe and please share the podcast with your friends. That is the number one way you can help us reach people with God's love and healing. We love you guys. Hope you enjoy the podcast. Hey, everybody. It's Joe and Angel. Welcome to another Mailbag Monday where Angel and I take time and answer the many, many questions that get mailed in and emailed in and sent in to us. So we're trying to pick uh, the ones that we think are the best ones, you know, that are pertinent for what's going on today in our society. So we've got a good list. So Angel, let's just jump in. All right. Happy Monday, everybody. Happy Monday. I may be married to a narcissist. It seems like my husband is constantly thinking about himself. Our children and my emotions and thoughts always fall by the wayside. How do I break through to help him see the world doesn't revolve around him? Well, number one would be prayer. Lord, take blindness from his mind, lighten the eyes of his understanding, send labors across his path. Those are three great ones I start with right there because they're blinded. I'm act, I, if I act stupid, it's because I don't know any better. And if I'm rude or mean, I don't know any better because nobody wants to be hated. People are trying to be liked. So they do what they do, trying to get affirmation or acceptance. So if they're doing that, they don't know any better. So a uh, narcissist is not what you want to be or be married to. It's not good. But uh, there is power more than a narcissist. God is stronger than a narcissist. So. Uh, I just take it, Lord, Lord, help my spouse take blindness from his mind. You can use Google the scriptures about being blinded in scripture. Take blindness from his mind and lighten the eyes of his understanding. Send the labors across his path at work or Walmart, wherever he's at, to strike iron and cause him to think about what he's doing. Help him be a more loving, kind spouse. And God will do that. God will do what you ask. Him. And really, it's it's indicative of this generation that we have raised a, a whole generation of people that are just so <laughs> we have catered to our children and, and, and uh, I'm special and given them everything. So that just continues a very selfish pattern. Yeah. So it's kind of like you're, uh, you're going to have to retrain some bad thinking. Somebody needs to them, son, you have not married your mother. You didn't marry your mother. <laughs> now, there's a national bestselling book called that. I think you didn't yeah. marry, I didn't marry my mother. Yeah, so. but it's a, it's a challenge. Yeah. And and the thing is, is, and somebody said this one time, there's givers and there's takers and there's no in between. And I kind of tend to agree with that. Yeah, I um, so I, I just think um, spiritually, that's what they're going to need a Damascus road encounter. Whoa. That's what I would just pray that God would just knock him off of the donkey and, and God will do it. Yeah. God loves, listen, God loves you no more than he loves his own son. There's nothing God will not do for you. So you've got power in your prayer. I don't care who you're married to, what you think, because the devil, he'll lie to it. Well, there's no way out. They're not going to change. I mean, it's not. No, no, there's a loving God who wants your spouse to do what's right. And sometimes the, 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 the filter that they're filtering everything is it's, it's all about me. You know, I didn't have children until I was 30. And I talked to somebody after I'd had a child and they had several children when they were young. And um, they said, to me that I'll never forget this phone call. He said, he called, it was calling my husband actually. And I answered and he said, how are you doing? How's it, how's the adjustment going to having a baby? Cause I'd been married for 10 years. So it was a quite an adjustment <laughs> and I, I was never a babysitter or anything. So it was just like, Whoa. And um, I said, the biggest change without a doubt is that I used to walk into a store and all I had to think about was me. And now <laughs> I'm the last thing I think about. Yeah. <laughs> and that's Ooh. the most wonderful thing in the world. I never would have thought if you'd asked me, do you think you're selfish? I'd have said no. no. But I was. No. I was. And um, so um I mean, I would I wasn't like give I would give stuff to people and everything, but uh, you know, my heart didn't understand what it was like to really re- defer to someone else but the to second live, that live for others and and second that little boy was placed in my arms mm. everything, yeah, changed. everything changes and it was the best change ever so you know, my my first wife and i we married five years we had a first baby life was good we went where we want ate what we want went on vacation we wanted and when that baby dropped i went to the bottom of the food chain i was the last thing on my wife's mind i thought holy biscuit i thought i was special not anymore, you know, and so it's just the way God's got it set up. It's a real good system. God, God will grow you up whether you want to or not, and uh, and you grow up by giving your life away. It's real simple. Do you say we'd be great in my kingdom? 
become a servant to everybody else. That's how you become great in God's eyes. Serve yeah, but else. they really do need to to grow up and yeah. and because really marriage is about serving one another. It is. It's not about being served. I tell people marriage is a funeral. Hallmark's got the cards all wrong. It should say, I'm so sorry I heard you got married. Because if you don't die at that ceremony, you're a half dead zombie. Woo! It's true. You're it a is, mess. It is true. And really being the head of the house. You know, we, when I was growing up, everybody thought it was the man's in charge. And, yeah, burp, 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 well, burp, burp. and that really isn't what it's talking no, about. He's the head servant in the home. You're yes. not the head. You're not the head dog. You ain't the lead dog. <laughs> woo, woo. <laughs> <laughs> Get behind the pack, son. <laughs> so, yeah. So I would just really, like Joe said, um, really right. pray that the Holy Spirit would intervene. And he will. He wants it behalf. more than you do. God mm-hmm. wants him to change more than you do. So you're not working against God. You're working with him. Yeah. Sometimes two people push your buttons and, and you know, um, I, I heard a story one time where this, this, uh, guy who had a real hot temper and, uh, his wife would just react to it every time the, the same cycle, same cycle, same cycle. <laughs> and then one day he came in and he just kind of bit her head off and she's just like, you know what? I choose love. And it made him matter. Yeah. And she said, you know what? I choose love. And it made him even madder and because uh, he couldn't get the reaction out of her. You can't slap the hockey puck. You can't find the hockey puck. Where'd the hockey puck go? And then that over time didn't happen overnight, but it did change him. Yes. And so, uh, uh, you know, whatever you've been doing is not working. Nope. So I would change. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide you. Too yes. 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 On, on what's the best way. Yeah, to and he wants it. to. Yeah. Uh, whether you think about it and you go to sleep, whether it's a dream or somebody calling you on the phone, just sharing something you didn't even, they didn't even know what they were sharing. Got to get the information to you, what you need to do. Right. All right, Joe, our children are very different. One daughter is outgoing and the other is quiet. The one that is outgoing seems to always be invited to do things with friends while the other says she prefers to be alone. I don't want to pressure my quiet daughter to change, but I also don't want her to miss out on Great people and relationships that can be had by opening up more. Do you have any suggestions for me? Yeah, just they are what they are. No two children are the same. They come out different. They have a different thumbprint, a different voice print. God is a creative God. And uh, I've shared it so many times. We had our first daughter and uh, 18 months later, we had a second daughter. But the first one, uh, she was almost like an adult. She spoke in adult language. We didn't talk baby talk to her. Ooh, good, good. We didn't do that. We talked like adults, and she talked like an adult. You know, please pass the please pass the cereal. You know, like, and she's three. Like okay, and so well, then our second daughter came along. I thought the hospital made a mistake. There's no way this is our kid. <laughs> the, they're left handed, blonde hair, blue eyes. No, this is not my kid. We all, we had DNA. We always did that. You know, the hospital did. No, it's our kid. Well, how did this happen? Well, God's a creative God. So my first daughter's a college professor. My second daughter's a great athlete. Uh, both their gifts made room for them, made them famous, and got them careers. But they were not the same gift. And our third third daughter came along. She was totally different than the first two. So they're not the same. So uh, don't force anything. Uh, now, I wanted all my kids. How do I say this right, Angel? We wanted all of our kids involved in school. I want you to play sports, music, drama, basketball, soccer. I want you to come home busy, tired, and, and wanting to go to sleep. And so I, 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 we did. So parents would judge us, you know, well, you, you made a God out of sports. No, no, my kids are going to be with me about 18 years, maybe 22. I want them busy, tired, and happy. So when we got home, I said, can I take them back and go to bed? Please, darling, please go to bed. And uh, I don't want you to sit in your room all day with nothing to do and your brain's running, you're thinking stupid thoughts. I don't want to keep you busy. But. They're not busy doing the same thing. My athletic daughter played sports all the time, went to summer camps, played AAU ball. First daughter couldn't even go one in the court, the other keep basketball with her. And so but she was smart, made straight A's. I did not have that same approach because I was not going to go to every every <laughs> sports. <Yeah. laughs> I sat, started different. I sat We're through different. one season of T-ball, <laughs> sweating like a dog. Woo. It felt like 110 degrees out it there was. for a game that went on for three hours and nobody scored a thing. <laughs> and I was like, you can forget this. So I finally said to my son, okay, let's make a choice here. Are we going to choose sports or music? And thank the Lord he chose music. Well, he's gifted too. Yes, so. he was gifted. But it, I mean, it was like uh, that was a gift to all of us. 
So, but then, you know, he, school was very easy for him. Uh, he touches an instrument. He can play it. My daughter struggled through school, hated it, hated it. Now, the funny thing is now she's an adult. She's got her master's, yeah. which I said to her, why did you torture me for 12 <laughs> solid years? Some gifts blossom late. <laughs> that one blossomed very late, but um, and there, you know, my daughter would greet you at the door every afternoon after work doing a Disney musical. <laughs> and, uh, and my son would, you know, if, if, if he never opened his bedroom door and just played video games, he'd be perfectly a happy. out of an oak board. Like, how you doing, son? Uh, so they're very different, but, and, and, and they're great. They've turned into great adults, yeah. but they're just not the same. And you can't have the same expectations because where my daughter would struggle, I can still remember her putting her little head in her hands and going, I'm trying so hard when it came to school. And um, uh, I knew she was, and I, my son would never even bring home a book. So <laughs> it was just very, very hard, but I couldn't compare the two because uh, they, were, they were absolutely nothing alike. But I, I can remember even saying, to my son, in some ways, she's learning better life skills because nothing comes easy. She has to work for everything that she gets yeah. and everything comes so easy to you. I'm concerned, you know, that you've never had to work for anything. Well, so. The amazing thing about all that is they are very close as adults today. They're best friends, and uh, but they're total opposites, total opposites, their gifts and what they like to do. But they are best friends. It's, yeah. It's, it's so great. it'll all work out, but everybody's just different. Sometimes those quiet ones are the wise ones. <laughs> Slow to speak, quick to hear. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, Joe, my husband keeps going to his mom to talk about our problems in our marriage. But danger, danger, Will Robinson. <laughs> I don't think this is right because she only hears one side. Do you yep. have experience with this or any tips for me to be able to communicate with him that it, it's not fair to me? Sure, I just give him my own testimony. When I first got married, uh, we got a rent house a hundred yards from my mom and dad's rent house. So I'm working <laughs> shifts, my wife's working shifts. So I'd come home, I'd walk across the field behind my house to mom's, and I'd eat dinner with her. And so all of a sudden, the phone would ring an hour and a half later. It's your wife. I said, "Hello." <laughs> she said, "Where are you at? What are you thinking about? You calling about my mom's? What are you doing? I'm eating dinner. Did you think about me?" No, you were gone. You're at work. <laughs> what about me getting some food? Come on over. There's some leftovers. That did not go well. And so I realized the best thing that happened in my marriage, three years into our marriage, I got a job three states away. And we moved three states away. Great job. Uh, and it was tough. You know, we had to learn a lot of new things. Great job. We had no family. There's no mom and dad, no in-laws, nobody we can borrow a gallon of milk from or a can of gas or a lawnmower or a weed eater. We were on our own. And the greatest thing that happened to us in our marriage was moving three states away. We'd see our parents twice a year and for the next 30 years. And that was it. I had to grow up. And I, I tell people, that's the greatest thing that happened to me. I had to grow up. And it was just the opposite for me. My former husband would do the same thing with his, to his dad. <laughs> and he made us the enemies. Yep. I mean, we became terrible enemies and it really, it hurt him more than it hurt me because yeah. in the end he's trying to bring peace. And it's just like, no, I don't want to go see him. No. <laughs> and um, I mean, it took years to overcome that, but yeah. And Joe and I, Joe and I, my first husband, and I, we moved to Washington state from Florida. So, Lord have mercy. so we got a, as far away as we could. And honestly, that's probably the only reason we made it that first year, but everybody doesn't always have that option, but he needs to cut those cords because that's just not healthy <laughs> to do that with mom. Well, the thing or is, anybody, friends or anything, you just need to be very careful. Like, I, oh, for example, one time I was at dinner with this woman and her friend came who had never been married. And the whole meal, she was ripping this woman's husband. And I said to her, if you don't get rid of that friend, your marriage is doomed. Yep. Because she's sowing seeds of discord between you and your husband. Yep. And. She did eventually divorce her husband, and that's wrong. And you're going to have to answer for those kinds of things. Well, men are they think this woman likes me. Well, shoot, yeah, she doesn't live with it. She doesn't have to wash your dirty underwear or, or listen to you pass gas in the morning or, or, or come down the hallway scratching your backside on the way to the bathroom. She, they only see you in public when you're dressed up and you're acting nice. They don't see you 20 hours a day. Marriage is a different world. It's a God created world, but it's different. So that public stuff that's a lie of the devil. That woman, that man doesn't love you. They just see it's your best. Well, I've never seen you at your worst. Maybe you should just have them listen to this podcast. 
Whoa. <laughs> Guys, listen, there's a lot of challenges in raising a family yeah. or uh, having a marriage that works. Today, the enemy is on the prowl. He is after the family. He's Family's after our not children. for wimps. It's it, not a it wimpy thing. Not, it's not. But I want you to know that we do have a lot of resources. Yes. And um, if you need something on parenting, on finances, on money. Marriage. Uh, marriage men, anything like that, just check out our website at joemcgeeministries.com. It's loaded. All of them are loaded with scripture. It's the word of God. It's going to set you free and keep you free. It's what yes. God said, not what your daddy said, not what your mama said, not what your cousin, your brother, your neighbor said. It's what God said. So if you feed on the word, then not third John two, Joshua one, eight, Psalm one, two, three, you'll prosper and have good success. We trying to do I'm trying to prosper, not go broke. I'm trying to succeed and not fail. How are you going to do that? Yep. You know, open your Bible once a day. Just read a few verses. Just read a proverb a day. It'll make you holier than most people on this planet. So just get in the Word of God. And it'll change you. It will indeed. You guys have a great week, and we'll be talking to you next Monday. God bless, guys. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life. it has got a great future for you and your family. We're here to help you get there. Please make sure you visit Joe McGee Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. There you find all of our Friday funny videos and other encouraging resources for you and your family. While you're at it, be sure to visit JoeMcGee.com. We have all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.